<laughs> Why are you like this? Why are you like this? I mean, being like, okay, well, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just hit the button. Mm. What was that? Blizz. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind if you fucking deleted my tunes. They my tunes. Dang it. Ooh. I'm so tired today. I had so much to do already today. I'm literally just gonna go do a couple of things to try and get uh, the rest of those Titan Disc Fragments. Hey, Iliotan. I was so frustrated with Twitch last night, being the way it was, and then uh, Liz contacted me and was like, do you realize that when you're online, like, it doesn't actually show that you're online? I'm like, like, literally? Like, yeah, no, apparently half the time when I'm streaming, it doesn't show me as being online at all. So I contact Twitch to support, and I'm like, what's the goddamn deal? Has there been action against my account or some shit? And their response was basically, uh... Endless stock responses? I'm like, great. This 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 is super great. You're, you didn't listen to a damn word I said. That's good. Oh, that's right. I need to go to Dark Flynn Cleft. The other, their response was, um, cause I was just like, this, this is, these are things that are true about my thing. I want to know if there's some problem because I stream so frequently that, that I'm being like actioned against like quietly because I, I stream a lot or something like that. Like, is there a known bug where if you stream too much in a single day or you do too many streams in a 48 hour period, it doesn't restart like whether, like, it doesn't show that you're online for half of those streams or something. And the guy was basically like, if you are having problems with your account, it may be that you do not stream frequently enough. I'm like, bitch! You're a robot, aren't ya? I'm thinking possibly he's not a robot now that I've had some time to think about it and it's not a million o'clock at night, but I still think that that was possibly a bot response, because I was like, okay, since you completely misunderstood the fact that I literally stream every day, twice a day, have since 2020. <laughs> I'm curious to know if. Apparently there's been no action on my account, but I don't really trust that, because, like, if they don't understand that I stream a lot, then, like, how, how in the hell can I trust that they actually have access to my account records? So I also emailed them. 
And I have a funny feeling the response is going to be the same thing. If you are not a partner, you may actually come across the situation where your account has been deleted. Yes, because that's, that's definitely what I was talking about. Not everyone in the party getting hit! Ladies and gentlemen, do not stand on the fucking middles of the tracks. Why are you tanking it right there, you stupid shit? The worst part about this is she keeps moving him, which means that I need to keep moving. And I need to make sure I'm not standing in the goddamn center of the frickin' zoom. I mean, okay, I won't be mean to robots, but it, it it's just frustrating that, that they, they, I actually said you need to improve your robots. If that was a robot, it, it, it desperately needs some upgrades to, like, its understanding of what's being said. I'm pretty sure Jet, t Chat GPT could have given me a better, a more, a more reasonable answer, even if it wasn't even Twitch policy. But apparently they, they want to say that it's it's a bug that should be resolved within 24 to 48 hours. I'm just like, considering this has been an on-again, off-again bug that's been plaguing my stream for literal years at this point. It's just one of those things where, at random, and I know when it happens because I literally will be sitting here with one viewer... And that one viewer is me. Like, that's that's how I know there's only one viewer. And I don't get anybody in. I don't get the, my Discord notification doesn't actually go live. And I can sometimes solve it by stopping the stream completely and restarting it. But doing that is... I feel like that's not a good choice. Like... Because it makes, it makes you look like you're bugging out when all you're doing is just trying to get Twitch to recognize that you've gone live.
Oh yeah, I stepped on a toy that turned me into a worgen. Actually, at first it turned me into a gnome, and then I was like, wait a second. I wonder how, what, what else it could turn me into. So I, tur I jumped on it a bunch of times until I turned into a male worgen to see what the animations look like. And actually, from time to time, I keep turning back into a male blood elf, because apparently that's how the animation works. Which, which, if if you don't know why that's really funny, it, they literally took a shortcut, and now I understand why they have these issues with potentially giving us the, uh... Instead of trying to figure out how to make... There, there's this one move that I do, which is Blade Dance. I'll do it I'll do it as soon as I enter combat with this guy. So we're here. I hit Blade Dance. It goes wee 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 wee. And then I pop back. And you might notice that I'm, I'm a Blood Elf during that part, which is uh, special. But it's actually... That's that's actually proof positive what they did in order to make that animation happen. They couldn't figure out how to do it fast enough with a live character. So there's a hidden... Uh, basically, it's like a video. Only it's 3D. That gets activated... Yeah, in order to make the, the the character move that fast for that particular for that particular move, they just have a a hidden version of the animation and it doesn't live animate, it, it's actually just plays the video basically of, of the character moving as fast as it needs to move. One of the DPS is dead. I was wondering why we weren't killing anything really fast.
<laughs> oh, we're actually raising the DPS. You know you guys could have done that before, right? <laughs> God damn it. So even though they could probably animate it, it's it's literally the fact that they're going to have to program in an individual uh, motion capture video thingy thingy for each race that they want to add the abilities to. And that's either way too much work or they just can't be arsed to do it. But if a cow can be a rogue... All right, away we go. I had to do that for uh, the weekly. I kind of like the concept of like kobolds knowing something. They know something, and that's why they always got a candle stapled stapled to their head. Cause you know, you know, take candle, cause they're scared of the darkness. Okay, so I think did that one, did that one. The only weekly I haven't done other than uh, the light blah blah blah, which I find intensely frustrating and currently avoid. I'll do it eventually when uh, I've maxed out the reputation of everything else. But for right now, I don't need it. And there's other reputations I could grind in instead that are more fun.
and be like, no, if you're underground, you stay underground. That was a wall. That was a wall. That was definitely a goddamn wall. Alright, now I need to turn these in over here? No, not here. Over here? Somewhere. Oh, up here. I was right. It's just up higher. LAG! I need to turn one into you. Okay, then I need to go to the archive. Flat. Okay, let's pause the music here. Sorry, I got distracted. So the music is, or the in game is loud enough. And let's get ready to lose our temper over yet more freaking Titan worship. Uh, audio. Master, a bit higher. So we're recovering little nibbles of of hmm? history every time we do one of these quests. Keep your eyes open. I'll contemplate what we talk. At the Titan's command, we keepers began the acclamation. Each installation, all linked to the Hall's origination, produced vast numbers of Titan forged workers. We fired the great forges to fuel the acclamation and empower the manifold to heal the ravaged world. Uh huh. And who wounded it in the then first fucking place? Destruction of the Corway, a direct channel to the heart of Azeroth that would allow the Titans to study the world's soul without harming it. However, as we delved deeper, we encountered certain obstacles, colossal crystals, which we came to realize were calcified chunks of the world soul's essence. They are of great power, and I wonder how many yet remain undiscovered beneath the earth, all over the world. By word of the great Kazgaroth, the Titan's research has revealed that Azeroth's world soul is indeed the prime. Our purpose may yet be fulfilled. Enormous powerful chunks of world soul essence. Do you think Beladar and Halifor could be one of them? Potentially. But it was never within the scope of our edicts to study the crystal. He mentions the Titan Forge making the core way. Did you know it was built to study the world soul? We were created for the great purpose of serving the Titans, and thus we built it. Its purpose was irrelevant to us. We fulfilled our edicts dependably, and we have strived to do so throughout the millennia. Despite Kaz Algar facing many setbacks. Setbacks? What do you mean? 
Long ago, the continents of the world split apart, and the machinery that powered our facility was damaged, cut off from the manifold. We were unable to repair the connection. We operated on auxiliary power for a time, but eventually it ran out, and we fell into disarray. That must have been the sundering. It's miraculous that any of this survived intact. Well, there goes my theory about Belladar. Is th that crystal there? I actually turned the camera to make sure I was seeing what I was seeing. That crystal there is raw and unprocessed. It's faceted a little bit, but it's not carved into. And I think Belladar being carved into instead of being the raw, unprocessed chunk of of stuff that it is says possibly Belladar is what I think it is. It's it's it is. It is a light installation for the purposes of forcing Azeroth to become a light creature. No, because this, this stuff has largely not been revealed. Like, we knew that Azeroth was probably a planet with a soul, because why else would Sargeras care about it? As early as like Warcraft three, we we already had a uh, an inkling that that because Sargeras destroyed, uh, what were called Titan Souls at the time, uh, the Titan Souls were inside of planets and they hatched out of planets and Sargeras was more than willing to kill them. So it was sort of understood around the time of Legion that there there is only one flavor of God and that singular flavor of God is Titan. And therefore, if Azeroth has a soul, it's a Titan soul, and it's it's not anything beyond that. Us receiving new information that actually, no, it's an unflavored soul, that the Titans have been trying to turn into a Titan, adds in all sorts of very interesting concepts that I kind of appreciate. I think that's interesting. But my thing is, like, if I, if I back out of here, we zoom out a little bit, so what what we what we have here is a world that at the beginning as far as anybody can tell the first things that landed on this planet were vo were were the old gods they're aligned with the void they they kind of set themselves up to corrupt the planet and run it during that time the elemental planes also like the elemental lords made contact to the old gods and also kind of Settled in a bit. They they had their own little areas where they were kind of like allowed to come into Azeroth's atmosphere, and then one day the Titans showed up. All right, Titans show up. They start kicking the shit out of the old gods. Realize they can't kill the old gods because it starts wounding Azeroth. When they do that, so they lock all the old gods away. They set up all this machinery to convert Azeroth into uh, into a Titan soul, and. So far, we have the bad guys, which are the old gods, and the good guys, which are the titans. Of course, most of history tends to be, you know, espoused by the victors. But the thing is, we've also been aware that there are... There's a, a goddess named Elune, and everyone's like, well, I guess Elune's a titan, wouldn't she be? But she never gets included in the names of titans when we see the names of titans. We do have a titan who seems to be loyal to Elune, which means that Elune's outside of the Titan Pantheon, which means that she's her own goddamn thing. And we found out, not too long ago, that she's the equivalent of a life deity, where the Titans are order deities. And life and order can coexist, so it makes sense that there's Titans that are, you know, that are lean towards nature magic, and there's 
those who lean perhaps towards other types of magic. Theoretically, they may lean towards, say, the light or fell in the case of Sargeras and so on and so forth. So it's it's one of those things. But if we if we look over here, we are well at Kazelgar. Kazelgar, there was a tree here. That tree is growing down into the base of of Azeroth, and there are trolls that are there just to protect it from being destroyed. We've got the entire planet here where there's titan facilities absolutely everywhere that are all designed to reprogram the planet like rebuild it from the ground up that was the original creation myth that we had all sort of heard but now there's sort of this idea that the titans are just as big an invasion force as anybody else and that everybody kind of wants a piece of her and you can kind of look at all the different places where, like, okay, so there's a Titan installation up here in the Storm Peaks, but right down, well, right here is Ice Crown Citadel, and we found out that this is a giant fuck off antenna that basically aligns the world, the realm of death, to here. So we have things trying to force her to be ordered, things that are trying to force her to become a death god. There's there's shit over here that is trying to make her a nature god. And all of a sudden, and also absolutely everywhere, there's portals into, like over here in Kalimdor, there's portals into the Firelands. There's a portal uh, down here that that is into, into the uh, elemental plane of air, the throne of the four winds of the vortex pinnacles, like busting in on this area. Like, we literally have so many spots where everything is trying to get the fuck in here and take over. And and I'm thinking that everybody's guilty of trying to take over this thing. And that doesn't necessarily contradict any of the for former lore, because, after all, we had most of our history via what the dwarves knew about the titans, because the dwarves, like the earthen, were created by the titans. And anything previous to that from, say, actual horde races that existed long enough ago, like, troll lore is very, very hard to pin down because they've had so many wars. And they kill each other and they eat each other constantly. Back back in the day. They, 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 less cannibalism now. But they kept on fucking each other up. And because they kept doing that, and killing bugs, and killing each other, and killing more bugs, and killing more of each other. There's not a lot of history. So the people who sort of, sort of, kind of know the history are the nature, are like the, the Loa, the nature gods that have existed on Azeroth for God knows how long. That some trolls can commune with, but even the Loa aren't very forthcoming about what the fuck happened during the dawn of existence. Because either they don't know, they don't want to know... Or the Loa that do know are just, like, forbidden from talking about it. Like, for instance, Juan Samdi, who's my favorite Loa in the whole heckin' world and I love him to bits, isn't even the first Loa of death. He's actually the third one. We don't talk about number two because we don't know who the fuck he is. But number one was Muizela. And Muizela was a, uh... A Loa of Death who basically demanded trollish sacrifice and uh, was worshipped largely by like one clan of trolls out in the desert and um, he would send his avatar to basically devour their tribe from time to time. Boizella is technically dead. He tried to raise himself by stealing a bunch of energy. Th 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 this is a whole plot from Shadowlands. Stealing a bunch of energy in the afterlife to try and resurrect himself and and his and his little uh, little soiree party, and one seventy fucks them up because he he has way more worshippers and therefore way 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 more power than they do. Still a fun fight. So like Moisella isn't gonna be forthcoming about that because. 
uh, one, he keeps dying and having to reset himself. And two, like he's gonna tell any of us what the fuck happened back in the day. Because he may not remember, he may be forbidden by some edict we don't understand, or he may just not fucking care to tell anybody. Like, you know, what, what, what a, a creature that imagines itself to be some flavor of God isn't going to be too forthcoming about how exactly they were created, especially when they want you to worship them as a god because it's the only thing that gives them power. And that's true of all the Loa. The Loa are very kind of... not giving a singular shit about um, the people who follow them, necessarily. Not a lot of them, anyway. So, some of them are a little more forthcoming, or a little more friendly, but a lot of them do not give a singular shit. They are there for the power they get from being worshipped. And from troll mojo magic that uh, empowers them and keeps them going. Like, it's it's kind of a 50-50 thing. The, the, the Loas give them powers, they use those powers to convert more trolls to the worship of the Loa, and then the Loa get more powerful, allowing them to convert more people. And the thing is, like, people are like, well, you know, how are Lo the Loa, the Loa and, and the, the animal gods of, of the Night Elves so different? They aren't. They're exactly the same fucking thing. 100% the same. They are the same thing. And the reason why we know they're the same thing, aside from the fact that we've literally been told over and over again, is... The animal spirits do the exact same thing. They, they become powerful because they influence the elves to meditate on them or worship them. Same flavor of, of focusing mental energy toward them. And then those gods grant the elves specific powers like the ability to turn into a bear or a cat or whatever. But like even the old the old um, animals who've been around forever and ever and ever, like Malorn, who's like the the he's a deer of type, like that's that's his animal. You think he's going to be forthcoming about how precisely he was created and what the fuck was going on before the Titans got there? No, <laughs> because everybody on on the planet respects the Titans, and if you start bad mouthing the people, something the people respect as gods. They're gonna come for you. They're gonna stop worshipping you. They're gonna think that you're a rogue element. So they have a vested interest in not explaining any of that shit. Which is a massive problem because it means that the only way we find out history is by finding archaeologists, most of whom have a pro-Titan bias, to, to look into things based on what records are left from older, older areas like this where... Things there, there was no great war here. Like, one thing that is nice about this place being so fucking far away from everything else, because this was under a bubble for a long time, and, uh... This, so this was very, very separated from everything. And also, the nearest shore to that area, which is here, this was also under a bubble for a time. So, like, really, no one could approach this. There was no war here. Things haven't been destroyed here, or rewritten here, or conquered here, or taken over by outside forces here. So, absolutely everything is still preserved. It might be really wrecked, or really in disrepair, but it's still there. Which means we can find out more information than we could pretty much anywhere else on the planet. Because everywhere else either has trolls, which <laughs> Kesselgar sort of does, but they're a different, they're a different tribe of trolls. Or, or they have elves. And between trolls and elves, wars happen. And, and bugs. Trolls, elves, and bugs. That, that has deleted a huge amount of history. It's just the wars between those various races. We do have trolls here, and we do have bugs here. But one thing that is interesting is the trolls here that live in Ajkahet, they live over here in this area... The wild camp Uldar, U Ular, they live right next to the city of Threads, and they never went to war. So all this is still intact, and all this is still intact, which is weird, because traditionally 
Trolls and bugs have never gotten along. They just fuck, fuck each other up constantly. They're constantly at war. But because the, because the, the Ashkehet Nerubians never submitted to the old gods, the trolls never had a problem with them. Because the whole thing is, the trolls, the trolls were created, as far as anybody can tell, this is, this is history that may get rewritten because troll history is, to be frank, it's not written down anywhere. So it's mostly just stories that you hear from other people, and so on and so forth. But as far as we can tell, the trolls were created by the old gods. I, I personally am leaning towards the trolls were actually created by Azeroth herself. And the, the trolls are an Azerothian race. That's, that's her original intent for that race. But regardless of which way it went, the trolls were, uh, served the old gods for a time. And then they went, fuck this shit. Fuck you and fuck your tentacles and fuck everything. And they just started killing everything. Everybody who was loyal to the Black Empire fucking died by the hands of trolls. Trolls walked around and they fucked up everything. And because trolls were naturally adaptive and they have a natural regeneration, they were really hard to kill. Like, if you're a bug and you get your limb, limb torn off, you might grow it back, but not as fast as a troll grows his back. A troll's gonna rip off all of your limbs and chomp on, like, chomp on your head and fucking eat you. Because trolls can eat anything, and they can survive anything, and they just were really, really, really hard to kill. So even though the bugs had much greater numbers, the trolls had much greater abilities to survive. So yeah, that's kind of the reason why most of the bug races have been, like, camped down to teeny tiny little realms. Except here. This is the only place where we have, we have a group of trolls living right next to a group of bugs, and they aren't actively murdering each other which is pretty significant that's 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 unique because again and it's one of those things where it's not that they've leaned away from trolls being ridiculously overpowered in terms of just a race on azeroth but they kind of take a quiet step back from that because you can't have one race be ridiculously overpowered you like you know, Ah, yeah, no, my, ours, ours, we can do anything. So, there's, there's been some diminishment of exactly how powerful trolls really are. But the trolls of legend were just powerhouses. And they fucked up everything. Which was fun. And cool. And I like, I like trolls. Which is why I'm so desperately curious about this shit right here. So desperately curious about it. Oh, I'm like, why is it so loud? I know why it's so loud, because I turned it up just in case I wanted to listen to it more. Audio. Back down to 15, thank you. Turn down my headphones before I turn my music back on, because I will go deaf. There we go. So yeah, there's the it's it's one of those things where like I was I was talking to someone who who wants to make there's there's an old book of lore that kind of got released um, sometime after Cataclysm launched. Either way, where they basically tried to codify and write down all the various stories, say who did what when in the ancient history of both Azeroth, but also like the greater galaxy universe of the World of Warcraft. Because there are different planets in, in this series. Oh, I need to go to Ashkahet. Like, I knew I needed to do something. I need to do some basic rumors and stuff, but yeah, the it's actually not too bad in terms of like what what does one need to do to to codify the lore of World of Warcraft and and the Greater Warcraft universe? Like, what what do you need to do? Well, you need to like 
say, these lore characters exist. This is the things that they did and when. But for a living game that's still being created where the greater history of the universe has not been revealed, if you... You have... You, well, basically, you have two choices. You can either choose to... Um, reveal everything in this book and then reveal it later in the game, which would be terrible! Or you can say, this is the codified stuff of the stuff that people on Azeroth know it's limited information. It is not necessarily the entirety of um, of all of the lore ever, ever, ever. Like it just, it is not. It 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 is lore to a certain point and no more. And people should be fine with that. But of course, there are some people who are just like, um. It should- I really, really want- oh my god, that's so ugly. That is an ugly ass mount. That's nasty. That's like oral gore fucking times 3000. Gross. Yeah, so either you can be satisfied with, with the, the lore as given, eons ago, or you could recognize that the lore- the lore is still being written. It hasn't all been written yet. The codification is basically to give structure that can be worked around, not to lock everything down and say, no more, there's- there's definitely no more information that could ever be given about this period of history. Nothing else happened between this period and this period. Like, as soon as you do that, you're- 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 Killing, killing your chances for interesting shit to happen, you know? This was supposed to do something. Huh. You know, that didn't count as an activity. Apparently those are broken and don't work properly. Good to know. Oh, there's a rumor.
Oh, Earsay, that's what it is. Oh shit! No, 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 no. How am I supposed to talk to this with the goddamn guard standing on top of it? Alexar the bully. As well as the map of the area as the transformatory with it point. I can't attack that target. I'm out of range. It's too far away. A long time since I found one of these. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Excuse me. Good to know. Leave me alone. I'm doing shit right now. Jeez. Take me from him. Oh wait, up.
Where's the trove, man? gotta be inside of this thing. How the hell do you get in? There's apparently some flavor of puzzle here. Must be there must be a teleporter. I'm blind. How'd I miss it? I don't know. I missed it though. seeing any rumors. Usually there's a lot of rumors around. Oh, there's one. I'll sip. Mm. 
Malodorous filter. so weird like for both the weaver and the vizier there are so many rumors around and here it's just like they're really spread out crystalline bright bloom Right, that's the memorial. I'm gonna give up on rumors. I just I can't fucking find anything that I give a singular shit about. I need Valor so and so.
I got this new anime plot. Basically, there's this high school girl, except she's got huge boobs. I mean, some serious hunkers. A real, real set of donkers. Packing some Doba Honkeros. Massive Dohunga Bengaloos. Little Tom Hunger Cougars. What happens next? Transfer student shows up one day with even the bigger banana goos. Humongous Hunger Lunga Nunnamo Gungas. Hello there, Earl. How you doing? I have to go out later today, so I had to do a bunch of finding, digging around. There are so many little picky statues and little annoying pieces of crap everywhere here. Jeez. I'm not trying to beat a time. Yeah, but now I'm really sore because this pulling it, pulling out all the pulling out clean clothes and trying to figure out what is good to wear and what isn't and. Taking a shower and hauling around, hauling around everything. It's just, it's exhausting. It's all, it's all painful and exhausting. Heck this meat sack that I have to inhabit. Heck it to heck. I didn't realize that there was a, a picture a picture show one in in this area. That's fun.
This is a discordant creature. Mm, I might need to go bigger. Okay, 50 stacks should show me almost everything. Except for the biggest elites. Yeah, that one was worth like eight. Oh no, what if I don't submit to the unseeming bitch? What if I just bounce on your head and then kick your ass? Now that was worth it. There's no way I think I can take that one. I don't think I can take that one. That one's looking mighty boss-like. I'm all ready to rearing to go, but I'm also in a lot of pain and I'm also really tired, so <laughs> yay! <laughs> uh, who do I turn this one into? Oh, this person over here. Hello!
for now. I'm gonna go get me an alpaca. Alpaca time. Well, provided I get lucky and find the alpaca rat. Only got one more leaf to feed it, and if I'm correct, it should be the last leaf I need to feed it in order to catch it. I was like, why is it, why is it light here? Oh yeah, Nyloth will be in Pandaria this week. Yes! <laughs> Look how happy it is! Boing, 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 boing! <laughs> oh my god! Look how it fucking jumps! Its legs go everywhere!
Can we just own our own platform? No. What? Am I just stupid? What? Have I gone offline? There's no entrance. Here so many times. What? What the hell is going on? The entrance to the four throne, the 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 throne of the four winds is missing. Apparently, sometimes this doesn't appear properly because of Zora Dormi, which makes no sense whatsoever. Because I've literally gone in here multiple times while flying around trying to get my alpaca. The other instance actually is over there, but I was actually looking to go do this first. This one's pretty straightforward.
Right, I can't do those ones, but I've done everything else for that one. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. I need you to be on heroic. Cataclysm. And as usual, we're only going to kill the first two bosses because they're the only ones I need to kill to check and see if the Drake is going to drop. what it's called I was like what's what's the air equivalent of the firelands answer skywall really not the one way around the pillar all right fine I found out that someone hired all the actors who were still alive who'd been in James Bond movies as the villains. Prada specifically did this and made them made them dress up in in like cool cool gear based on those characters from from James Bond movies. Which is kind of cool and ridiculous and very funny. It does it does drop off all terrace i thought it did but i wasn't sure anyways if you want to get out of this place easily and quickly this is how you do it just jump off a cliff and then you get ported to the entrance <laughs> oh then There we go. All right. 
so this is Glory of the Cataclysm Raider. We need Stay Chill and Foreplay. Stay Chill is... Defeat the Conclave of the Wind in Throne of the Four Winds while everyone has at least seven stacks of Wind Chill. And defeat Alakir in Throne of the Four Winds while he's affected by feedback. Okay, so Wind Chill comes from the North Wind. So we'll... Seven stacks of wind chill, which is this debuff. I'm so fucked. I'm so fucked, no! No! You're fucking kidding me! Fuck off! You're fucking kidding me! Ah, oh, why? is gonna suck to do.
doesn't say anything about windburst or not windburst uh feedback Him? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, for fuck's sake. I somehow did damage to him. Son of a bitch. end to me fucking this up by simply existing as a high level character. Hooray. What the fuck am I meant to do frickin' stay chill though? Okay, so I need to do need to do both of these in a kind of 
fucky way, so yay! Once again, did not do it correctly. So I can't, I can't actually kill all of them after getting seven stacks. So I need to do it another way where you kill one guy, go get, go get stacks off another guy, go kill that guy, get more stacks on the first guy, and then go ahead and kill that guy, and then kill the third guy, and hopefully they'll all be dead by the time you've actually gotten all the stacks up. I'll try and pray for you. Even though it's not you always make a fuss. Okay, I'm just don't test my patience. I'm trying to pace it. You kept me waiting. But I do need to get going because we are leaving soon to go do late Thanksgiving with assorted family members. So we will be back around 10 p.m. EST. I have no idea what state I'll be in because I'll probably be very tired. So God knows what we'll actually be doing tonight. But it'll be something. It'll be something. It'll be. I hope to see you guys then. Uh, yeah, we didn't do any art today, but that was because it just there were so many things I had to do to get ready to, for tonight, so that just didn't happen. But we will see you guys later. Y'all take care of yourselves, and y'all have a good night. Bye now. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I need to I need to send you guys on off to enjoy some more content elsewhere. What the hell's wrong with me? I am just completely out of it. Yeah. Anyways, we will raid out, even though it looks like there's nobody here. I'm going to trust that you guys are here, still hanging out and doing stuff. I I hate Twitch right now because it just fucking lies. It fucking lies all the fucking time. Uh, let's go visit uh, Elamir, who's doing some Sturdy Valley. We will see you guys later. Y'all take care of yourselves, and y'all have a good night. Bye now.